How's it going guys? It's Enfield here. Welcome to a new video. We're doing a new fixing world of tanks, uh, which is just basically a series I've done uh, previously on artillery and gold rounds, and they're just topics about, you know, certain mechanics in the game, and whether they should be changed, um, how they can be improved, and other things like that. So, um, as you can see by the topic or title, we're doing matchmaking. Um, matchmaking is something I see, seem to get asked about quite a lot as well. Um, but uh, it's a topic that I, I kind of feel like you can say some stuff on it. Um, but overall, uh, there's less to talk about than the Ardian Gold Round video. So this should be a, a shorter um, video today. So ultimately, um, there are two separate sort of things that people talk about in terms of matchmaking and uh, what they want changed about it. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, how far of a tier range you should get in matchmaking. In other words, um, we currently have what's called plus and minus two matchmaking. So uh, you could be a tier eight and you could see tanks in your game as low as tier six, or you could see as high as tier ten. Um, so this is this is important to talk about because. Um, when you're jumping in these tanks, a lot of these tanks are balanced around certain parameters, and when they're putting difficult situations, some tanks do better than others, and other things like that. Uh, so this is something that's been asked for a while, and people want, well, we should have plus one or minus one uh, matchmaking instead of the two that we currently have. Now, this is something that I thought about quite a lot, and it does sound really nice to have that. Um, certain tier 8 tanks really do not do well. Um, in the higher tiers and you know it's it's something that if I was playing certain tanks I wouldn't be bothered about but the other tanks it's like oh man I can't believe I've got this matchmaking so it is worth at least discussing now um, there would be a plus for Wargaming to do this and that would be that um, people would be happier just in general I think but also um, their whole thing with preferential premiums every premium they create they're, they basically scrapped the idea of preferential systems, and that wouldn't matter anymore if there's a plus one matchmaking, because that's all preferential is. It's plus one matchmaking instead of plus two. Um, so if you're playing the FCM, you can only see tier nine uh, instead of, you know, say, T54 mod one, which can see up to tier tens. So, you know, that would help their little premium situation out and better balance those tanks around the tiers that they're meant to be played at uh, with their lower pens. Now, the biggest issue I see with this is for smaller population servers, such as the North American server, which I think, I, do, I mean, it's difficult because it's all theorizing, um, but with the population on the North American server, I do think that it would struggle with this matchmaking a little bit, but on the flip side of that, maybe it's worth a try. Um, of course, with you know the general tier differences in matchmaking, it's important to note that uh, it used to be much, much more, much more different. Um, back when the game first came out, um, you know, people first started getting tier tens. You would have like KV ones against, you know, at, well, KVs, not KV ones, uh, against like uh, tier tens. So like IS sevens. Um, so you know, the matchmaking system used to be a lot worse. Uh, what we have now is just easy compared to. Uh, before, so those of you that have only ever had this matchmaking, you know, <laughs> keep in mind that it used to be a lot, lot worse. Um, so this is generally the the two arguments we have, or the kind of things we have to think about rather when we look at this is how will it affect queue times? Because Wargaming have introduced matchmaker their matchmaker in such a way that gives you quick battles. That's what the whole thing is based around. You should only spend a few seconds in queue before you get a battle. Um, you know, other games, and I'll talk more about this when I get to the other thing, um, you know, it can take minutes to get a battle. So, you know, uh, quick, quick matchmaking and then a quick battle, that's what this game's model is around. So would plus one uh, change that? It's difficult to know, but um, let me know what you guys think, at least in this terms. Uh, would you rather have it as it is now? Do you think the plus two is just fine as it is? Um, let me know. So, moving on, the ne next thing that people ask me about uh, quite a lot is skill-based matchmaker. What do I think of skill-based matchmaker? And they think, well, because, you know, I'm a top player, I, I would want skill-based matchmaker so I don't have to play with the scrubs. Um, now, this is, this, is, this is a more difficult one. And, and when we're talking about the, um, 
the matchmaking, uh, you would have to completely redesign the matchmaker, obviously, to uh, work around this. But if you were to do it, there are a number of things you need to think about. Uh, based on what metric are you going to determine how people are assigned? Uh, as far as I can tell, it, the only one they're going to do would be their own rating. Uh, you're not going to use W and 8, not that W and 8 would be a good one to do anyway. Um, although in fairness, I mean, you know, you, you add skill-based matchmaking, these metrics should be thrown out the window because you don't need them anymore. Um, you have skill-based matchmaking, then everything is really going to be redesigned. You know, you're going to have like ELO scores that are based around your winning performance in a skill-based match set, which is, you know, not what we currently have in any metric. So, you know, everything changes. Uh, when you think about, you know, you, you have WNA as it is right now, but then, you know, what your weighted damage is right now will be way different compared to weighted damage done to players of similar skill sets. Um, in other words, you know, someone who can farm puppy, it's the same sort of thing with low tier stat padding, but, you know, you, the person that can low tier, or, um, or rather, beat on puppies, you know, that's not, you know, 4,000 damage against uh, red, yellow player, whatever, is not the same as that against purple players. You know, it's way different. So, you know, that would throw those out the window anyway, uh, including Wargaming's own metrics. So how do you build that? You have to basically start from scratch, as far as I can see. So that's, that's something that needs to be considered. So, and the other thing to keep in mind when you're doing skill-based matchmaking is just how... How bottom heavy the skill base on the, the you know world tanks is. It's not like a, a League of Legends or Dota 2, and there's at least a decent amount of players in the other brackets, um, CS:GO, etc. World tanks. It is rare to get top players, and I think a lot of it is to do with just how the game is sort of marketed towards. Um, but nonetheless, I don't know that there are enough top players to make an effective bracket. You would have you would have to put super unicums against maybe even like as far down as you know like 1500 WNA players just to base on how rare it is um, so the worse you are I guess you would get easy matchmaking but the better you are it would be practically impossible I mean I know that's already sort of some of the ways but I mean in a lot of ways it's also punishing good players uh, for being too good you have to wait in queue because you're too good um, so that's difficult um, but I don't know it's all theorized uh, all theory, sorry, uh, you know, the whole thing, we can only hypothesize about what is actually going to happen, um, but I can see a lot of problems. Now, that's what they would have to, you know, what may occur if they do uh, change it to skill-based matchmaking, um, but should they? Uh, should they change it? I, I don't really think the game needs it, um, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't see... Why? I mean, I understand that it's frustrating when you get people on your team that are truly terrible. Um, but I mean, it it is what it is. I don't, I don't think in a 15-minute battle with you know with things like that that you know I don't know. Most battles are like what six, seven minutes. I just do you really want to wait in queue for that long just to get a a match where you might get some competence? I mean. I don't know. I think I think people are underestimating how frustrated they would get once they go from being able to beat up on people to like suddenly having really skilled competitive opponents all the time and uh, possibly getting wrecked within the first couple seconds of a battle and then being like, oh, well now I have to wait in queue for another five minutes. I don't know. Uh, it's difficult, but again, let me know in the comments. What do you think about that? Uh, do you think it's worth it? Uh, all I can see is people re-rolling for easier times. Um, you know, uh, I just, I don't know. I don't see it. I mean, we already have skill-based matchmaking in team battles. I know team battles aren't exactly the same. In fact, they still need to update team battles to tier 10s um, to properly represent the, the league format. But anyway, let me know what you guys think on skill-based matchmaking. So those are the two main things. Um, pretty much... You know, the only really thing left to talk about is people that want uh, limits on tank types and things like that, and maybe equivalent system. You know, so you this team has three heavies, the other team has three heavies. I don't think that's that necessary. Um, it can kind of screw you over on some maps, I guess, but you know, most of the time it's not that big of a deal. Uh, you know, 
you could also say, you know, you could argue for limited amounts of tank destroyers the same way it already is limited, but most of the time you wouldn't really see that. Um, so, you know, w with those, with those, I think they're far less necessary, and I think that's, that's more than is needed. I mean, you know, w when you get put in battles with, with like, 10 TDs, you know, this is so rare, um, that, you know, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, you know, in regards to the, the sh each team should be matched equivalently, um, also, again, I just don't think that's kind of, kind of boring as well, uh, to a degree. So, yeah, I mean, like, if you add those, you're still looking at bigger queue times for, like, not really that much of a gain in gameplay, so, but again, you can let me know what you think on that as well. Um, personally, I just don't think it's really worth it. So, that about wraps up my thoughts on the matchmaker. Um, I'm, I'm, I really don't think skill-based matchmaking is needed. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing plus one, minus one. I, but I just think, I mean, I think the North American server would struggle. I dread to think what the smaller servers, you know, uh, the Korean server, the Asia server, all those servers, I think they would really struggle. So... But the others, I, you know, skill-based matchmaking and equivalent matchmaking, I just, I don't really, I don't see it. But uh, again, let me know what you thought in the comments. Um, this was just a quick, you know, I guess, discussion on it. I, I'm not really going into too much detail, but just off the top of my head what the thoughts are. Um, perhaps later I'll make a more in-depth video with with numbers and comparisons and things like that. But for now, I just wanted to talk about it, uh, get the discussion going, so you guys can let me know what you think uh, should be done about Matchmaker, whether it's fine as it is, whether it could be changed, and what you would do about it. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you later.